What is going on guys? It's your boy Grizz and today we are going to be talking about all of the amazing things that the show released today. And to kick things off, we're going to talk about the show classics program that I did kind of touch base with a little bit last night. But I didn't expect to have this many cards that are honestly going to make even my squad. First off, the one thing that I'd like to talk about is every player that you get gives you 8,000 XP, which is insane. If you guys do remember, obviously every time they drop like the week one drops for the player of the weeks, whatever you want to call it, it's about 4,000 XP. And I believe until this week, it was only the last player that would give you the 4K XP. 8,000 XP per player is what, 32,000, 40,000 XP, which gets you at least two levels up. I believe maybe one I'm not a hundred percent sure I'd have to go look but I've already went up three levels not only did they release cards like this Kenta Maeda who is going to be a great reliever if I were to give a suggestion I think this guy should make most people's bullpens unless you have the best of the best cards which you might props to you if you do but I think he should definitely be have a spot for you Kybert Ruiz I know I just got the Alejandro Kirk card, and I love it. But this Kybert Ruiz being a switch hitter, having the hitting stats he does, and not only that, he does qualify for the Nolan Arenado boost, which makes him a very usable hitter. He already has 90 contact against lefties. You add in the plus 15 to his power, that puts him at 93 power, which is more than enough to hit bombs for you. And then on the right side of the plate, you get plus 15 to your contact, which puts him at 119 contact, and that 85 power, plus the 101 clutch, and his fielding is amazing. And he's got 40 speed, so he's not even like a Alondro Kirk, Joe Torre, but around the 20 range. He, he can leg out a double and a triple here and there. Definitely love to see this card being dropped. I didn't expect him to be this nice. And as we get later in the video, I do have another new captain that I might be using that we're gonna be talking about as well. Third, Nick Lodolo. I don't know how I feel about this card if I'm being 100% honest with you. I feel like he can definitely be usable, but no, he's got a sinker, so I'll give him that, but no cutter. As a lefty, you have to have a cutter, in my opinion. And his hits per nine, Ks per nine, there's not a single stat here above a 100. Aside, well, his clutch is 100, but aside from that, doesn't throw above 94 mile an hour, has no quirks. It, I, he's not going to crack my starting my starting rotation. I, he might. If people say he's good, I might give him a shot. But next up, they drop this Glaber Torres card. And with your boy being a Yankees fan, obviously I'm being a little biased here, but I do think that Glaber Torres will be my second baseman. I'm not going to put him at short because I have my guy Bobby Witt there, but Glaber will definitely make the squad, and I'll at least try him out. I mean, with these hitting stats, it's hard to say no. Nearly 100 all across the board. Great fielding, by the way. I wish he had 44 speed. Knock the guy off six. Come on. <laughs> but I love this card in, I believe, 22, the show. I could be completely wrong. I probably look like an idiot any time I make a reference to old shows because I don't have the best memory when it comes to that because typically most of my time spent on those games were me throwing controllers, if I'm being honest. Um, but this card was a beast then, hoping he's a beast now. The few times that I've used him in like the showdown, which I've already beat, love this swing. So hopefully he's gonna crack my squad and be a great addition to the team. And then last but not least, they dropped this Cody Bellinger card, which I said I loved last night. He looks good. Don't get me wrong. Looks amazing. 79 speeds would be great for a first baseman. You can. He's very serviceable in the outfield as well. The only problem is I have Joe Torre at first base, and I love that Joe Torre card. So Cody Bellinger's going to have to be a beast for me to take his spot, but he's definitely going to give him a run for his money, that's for sure. Maybe even the DH spot. I haven't quite decided yet. But this Cody Bellinger will definitely be making an appearance at some point on the squad. I wish that the contact was a little higher. But with that 92 clutch, he's definitely, you can use him. And another thing that was in this is a show classics pack one, which is kind of crazy. I mean, the chances of actually pulling something usable are not the best in the world. 
I mean, shoot, if you can grab this Edward Cabrera out of this pack and get really lucky, you got a new starting pitcher. Or if you want to sell him for 60,000 stubs, you can. Or this Nicholas Castellanos card, which is what I'm really hoping for, will be my DH. Or my first baseman. I don't know yet. But I really want this card. I like Castellanos' cards in any other MLB. Definitely looking for that. Trammel wouldn't be bad. People say that Soroka is the best pitcher in base in baseball. Or in the show, not in baseball. But they say he's pretty good. Uh, I already have the Andy Har And Kyle Lewis wouldn't make my squad. And neither would Logan Webb, if I'm being 100% honest. But any one of these guys is a chance to help you with your collections. I thought it was really cool they added it in. Plus, you get a ton of stubs, too. Some good packs. So we'll definitely take that as a first thing. Second thing, they went ahead and dropped the Season Awards Drop 5. And like I mentioned earlier, you get 4,000 XP per player you get. So that's another 16, 20,000 XP. Make that 60,000 XP just by doing these two programs. Who can say no to that? Plus, this Tanner Hook, I haven't decided if I'm going to use him, but he does look a, like a usable pitcher. And you get some packs. I mean... Give it a shot. So right there, there's two things you can grind for. Another thing that they dropped was they updated the mini seasons. And I was not expecting to see all of this. They added in to where you get this Bob Feller card. Bob Feller already always has a very funky windup and release. So he should be a very usable card in the game. But not only that, I mean, shoot, if you win the championship right away, you get 13,000 XP. Everyone to this point was complaining about the lack of XP you were getting. And well, we fixed that. The show was like, hey, we got you guys. We're going to give you some stuff. So 11,000 just for making the playoffs, guys. Right there, that's 24,500. That's insane. If you guys don't have the boss by, the, by Sunday, you're doing something wrong. And also, they added in these mini season legends and live series booster choice packs. I haven't 100% figured out who these cards are, but I was scrolling through the marketplace earlier and I did. Let me find them again. Give me one second. I found them earlier. Uh, where were they? Where were they? Were they 90 overall? Let me see if I can find it. But they did pop in the marketplace, unless it was a mistake for them to be in there, which is very possible. Yeah, this Luis Aparicio, Ken Griffey Sr., and Paul Canerco. This Paul Canerco looks, looks very usable with that Arnado boost. Ken Griffey Sr. doesn't look terrible, and this Luis looks, I mean, he is, you're getting what you get with him. He's a very fast, very great fielder. So, um, I'm thinking these are the three of the cards you can get out of that pack. I'm not 100% sure. If one of you guys know for certain, let me know in the comments. But that's still cool. There's four more cards you can add to the collection. And so last night I was playing some mini seasons, trying to get some last few packs. And I noticed there was a Bob, or sorry, not a Bob. God, what is his name? thinking of Bob Fett, Lou Brock. There was a Lou Brock card. And I was like, where the heck do you get this guy? It was kind of foreshadowing. They released another collection. This Lou Brock looks amazing. Obviously, he's not a power hitter. With 68 power against righties and 50 against lefties, you can definitely take one over the fence. But every other hitting stat is 100, plus 99 across the board speed-wise and great fielding. I am definitely looking forward to getting this Lou Brock. And I'm also really close to this outlier. So... And then, as if that wasn't enough, it's double XP weekend, y'all. So, freaking insane. Drop double XP weekend, dropped a bunch of new grinds, and they dropped that event that has Dante Bichette in it. And the Dante Bichette card looks very usable as well. I don't know where he'll crack my squad, but we'll definitely be looking around. And then last but not least, we gotta get into the first attribute update. Now... I know I told y'all I was going all in on Zach Gallen, and man, did I mess up. Um, 
for some reason, he dropped to an 82. Luckily, I still got about 1,200 stubs per card, so I kind of cut my losses in all honesty. Could tell Marte went diamond. Uh, who else went diamond? Corbin Burns went diamond. I actually pulled him right as soon as he went diamond. It was kind of cool. Craig Kimbrell went up to an 84. Ryan Mountcastle went up to an 80. Uh, Cedric Mullins went up to a gold. I'm kind of not happy with Santander saying it's silver. Um, Jordan Westberg went up to silver. Same with Grayson Rodriguez. I need to get rid of the cards I got out of him. And Colton Kowser. So you love to see that. Oh, he's going for it. Hold on. But if you guys haven't noticed, I think around last night, whenever I was recording my video, it was about 90,000 stubs. So I made 40K stubs off this attribute upgrade. So I'm not mad. Um, who's some other players that I know went up? Oh, Garrett Wicklock went up. I made some good stubs off of him. Um, trying to think of some major ones. Judge went down to a 90. So if you guys like Judge, he's way more affordable than there ever was. Juan Soto got very disrespected. He only went up two overall, which I think is dumb. Uh, Clay Holmes went up to gold, so you'd love to see that. Ooh, yeah. Um, I did mention Jose Caballero. He went up to silver, so I made about 3,000 subs off that. Very pleased. Bo Bichette went down to gold. Yeah, I don't really care about that. Jordan stayed at a 90. But Josh Hader went down to a gold. Trout stayed at a 91, which I think is crazy considering how well he's doing. Rangers side of the ball, nothing crazy. As far as I know, yeah. Braves, nothing insane happened there. I guess Marcelo Zuno went up to a gold. So I mean, that's cool. Mets, I did invest in... I always read Garrett. He was a common, went up to a 70 overall bronze. So I definitely made some pretty good subs off that. Phillies wise, nothing crazy. Brewers, I did have three William Petreras, so I made about 6,000 stubs off that. So he went up to diamond. Freddie Peralta didn't. Everyone said he was a lock to go diamond. I'm glad I didn't invest him. Uh, Guardians, Josh Naylor went up. Jose Ramirez went down. Andres Jimenez went up. So, I mean, I had a couple Josh Naylor, so I made some subs there. Crochet went up to a silver, as expected. Giants-wise, Snell went down. Tatis is up over a 90. Honestly, could crack some squads. No more. I mean, Nada went down and Goldschmidt went down for the Cardinals. Let's see. Who are some big ones? Oh, Scuba went up to a good diamond. A lot of great silver upgrades for the Tigers. Royals-wise, this is what I want to talk about. Bobby Wood Jr. is having a great season so far, and he stayed in 87. I hate that. But I did tell you guys to invest in Salvi, and he went up to a diamond. Or a gold, not a diamond. That would have been insane. So did Cole Reagans. So did Brady Singer. And I don't know if I talked about this guy, but I had about, I want to say about 45 of his cards. Angel Zerpa right here. He was a common... I was looking at his stats whenever I went to the game Sunday. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy a few of them. So I made some pretty good subs off that because he's having a solid season. Twins rise. Yuan Duran stayed. And Pablo Lopez stayed because he had a not a great outing. Nothing for the A's. Kind of expected. Mariners wise, I don't believe anything changed here. If I'm wrong, let me know. Pirates, nothing. I mean, Jared Jones went up. Um, I don't believe, and Mitch Keller, I believe, but nothing crazy. O'Neill Cruz stayed. Reds, Ellie went up to a gold, which is kind of crazy. It's a pretty big jump for him. Cubs, nothing. Uh, Nationals, Abrams went up. Marlins, <laughs> terrible. And Rockies, nothing. I think McMahon went up, but the Dodgers were a big one. Mookie Betts went up to a 94, making him one of the highest rated live series in the game. Glasnow went up to Diamond. Uh, Evan Phillips went down, which I thought was crazy. I don't think I made any profit. I might have actually made some profit off Bobby. 
Yeah, I believe I bought them at like 60 subs a pop. So that's some decent profit right there. Um, Will Smith didn't go up. Yamamoto went up to gold. So that's cool to see. Um, aside from that, I don't think there's anything crazy that happened here. No. Uh, Max Muncy went down to bronze. I know he was a silver. But aside from that, guys, that kind of does it. I mean, we have more missions for ranked seasons. So now you can actually get DeGrom or Mike Cameron, which is cool. Oh, another thing. One last thing that I wanted to talk about. The season one captains. This guy right here, Carlos Santana. Amazing stats for one. You come, but you come over here. Oh, he doesn't get the Arnado boost. That sucks. Look at this. There aren't many great switch hitters, in my opinion, in the show right now. There's a few. You might be able to hit the tier one boost. But once I start releasing more switch hitters, this Carlos Santana card is going to be very valuable. At 10 switch hitters on your squad, you get plus 8 contact against righties and lefties and plus 5 batting clutch, which is huge. It makes that Dominguez card have over 100 contact, I believe. It makes the already broken uh, Nico Goodrum card even better. Josh Bell is going to have higher contact. That Kyber Ruiz that was just released is going to have crazy stats. Ah, it's, it's hard to say no to that. With this captain pack also came like a Seiya Suzuki, who... Players born in Asia. That's pretty cool. Um, can get stats. And all you need is what? You need three or five or seven. And you get plus. Oof. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, this Trevor Hoffman. Play at pitchers that have reached 45 saves in the season. Okay. Clayton Kershaw here. You need left handed hitters and pitchers will get boost. It's not bad. Uh, David Ortiz is in here. Hitters from the 2000s decade. Hitters from years 2000 to 2009. That could be pretty cool. Mark Pryor's in here. Typically a great card. Three standout series players and above. And that's it. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. Nice little addition. I wish you could actually get these cards up and spend stubs. But, you know, it is MLB. Also, you got this Matt Chapman, who looks amazing. Great fielding as usual. Pretty good hitting stats as well. I will definitely be going for him. But, I'm just going to leave it here. People already rake with the 90 overall Yordan, and they just gave him a 97 overall card. He is in the chase pack, so, I mean, it's not as common to get him. But if people get him, he's also a good fielder, so don't worry about that. And he hits the R not a boost. So that power against lefties is going up over 100. The contact against righties is going to 125. So... Definitely be prepared to get killed by that card. But with that being said, guys, I hope you all did enjoy this video. More or less just kind of talking about how everything went. Let me know what you guys think about all this additions that they made in the comments. But if you did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button. And stay tuned for future content.